Hi, in this video I'll be going over pages 3 and 4 of Work Packet 2.2. We've been talking about conjectures, compound statements, and conditional statements. We've seen truth tables. Now we're going to see another tool to help us visualize, better understand the relationship between different statements. So we're going to talk about Venn diagrams. They're a visual way of displaying the relationship between sets. So there are three possible scenarios that you see over here. In one scenario, I'm going to be drawing my circles, and the circles represent the different statements, okay? So I'm going to be drawing my circles with one circle contained within the other circle, okay? In this situation, you'll be using the words all, always, or ever. So if you see these words in a sentence, think, oh, I'll probably be, I'll probably be drawing a circle within another circle. Okay, and what does this mean, this picture mean? It means that all elements of P are elements of Q. If I'm standing in the circle P, I'm necessarily also standing within the circle Q. So if I'm a member of P, I have to be a member of Q. So if I'm in P, then I'm in Q. And as you can tell, I'm using the if and the then, and we know that when I use that, I'm talking about a conditional statement. So this would be P arrow Q. If I'm in P, then I'm in Q. If the hypothesis, then the conclusion. So what does this depict when you have two circles, right? You're trying to understand the relationship between two statements, and you're going to draw two circles, and they slightly overlap here, overlap here in the middle. So what can you be demonstrating that way? Well, you're demonstrating a situation in which some things are sometimes true. Some elements of P are also elements of Q, okay? So what does this part in the middle represent? Well, if you can tell, these, if you're standing in the middle over here, you're in this circle, the circle P, but you're also in the circle Q at the same time. You're in P and you're in Q, and we know that to be a conjunction, right? It's a compound statement, a conjunction. So this area over here represents this condition, right? P and Q. Well, this whole, all, all this area over here, so both circles over here, including the the section in between, um, what does that represent? Well, if I'm either in P or in Q, I can be anywhere I want over here. If I'm either in P or in Q, either or, when I use or, that's a disjunction. So P or Q. Okay? And then finally, if they never overlap, if you can never be P or Q at the same time, you can't be both at the same time, then you'll use the words no none or never. There's no relationship between P and Q. So if you want to show that using a Venn diagram, you'll draw two circles which do not overlap. So let's go to the first questions over here. It says, draw a Venn diagram to represent each statement. Some students who take course also take band. So I look at keywords over here. I see the word some, and I see that the word some up here, that showed me some was used in this scenario over here. So when I draw two overlapping circles, that's what, I, that's what I'm going to be drawing. Uh, that's when I'm going to be showing the situation where some things are also true. So I'm just going to write it down a little short over here. Let's say the first statement is uh, students who take chorus. And the second is students who take band. Then I can draw two circles over here that overlap. Okay. I can call this P, I can call this Q, and that would show this situation over here where some students who take chorus also take band. That's true because there are those students in the middle who take chorus and take band. So I want to show, using a Venn diagram, the situation where numbers divisible by 6 are always divisible by 3. Always is the key word here. And as we saw above, when we talk about always, we're in this scenario over here where one circle is contained within another. So which one is contained within? Well, that's the hypothesis. Numbers divisible by 6 are always divisible by 3. So I'm going to write down P is, I'm just going to write it shorthand, divisible by 6. Q means divisible by 3. I know that if I'm divisible by 6, I've got to be divisible by 3 as well. So I'm contained within the uh, all the possibilities of being divisible by 3. So I'm going to draw over here two circles, one within the other. 
and the smaller circle is going to be divisible by 6, and the larger circle divisible by 3. If I'm standing in here, I'm divisible by 6, but I'm also necessarily divisible by 3. Question number 5 says some vertical angles are complementary. Again, we've got that word sum over here, and I know if I'm, if I'm using that word sum, I'm going to be using two circles which overlap, right? Because then this, the region in the middle will contain um, the scenario where sum is true. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to indicate the two scenarios. So some vertical angles are complementary. So I guess P could be vertical, and Q could be complementary. Okay, so I have some vertical angles are complementary. Some are not some are. So they're going to overlap somewhat. This is going to be P, this is going to be Q. And I know that the angles that are also, that are vertical and complementary, they're going to be here in the middle. Okay, so it's going to be that region over here in the middle. Question number seven says, whoops, question number seven says, shade the indicated region in the Venn diagram. So I'm going to shade Q. I want to shade Q. And you have to be very careful. Q is this whole circle over here. So if I want to shade Q, Q contains everything within that circle. Also this region in the middle here. Yes, it's also part of P, but I'm looking for the region which is Q, and that does contain that region in the middle over here. So let's go to the next page. And now I want to shade in the region P or Q. So either one can be true. So let's, let's try that out. If I'm standing over here, Am I in P or Q? Yes, right, because I'm in P. If I'm standing over here, am I in P or Q? The answer is yes. If am I standing over here, am I in P or Q? Yes, I'm in either one, I'm also in both at the same time. So in fact, it's everything, right? So P or Q means shade everything. I could be anywhere, okay? So let's go to question number 11. It says, describe each diagram using a conditional or compound statement. So if we look at, at a circle within another circle, we know we're talking about a conditional statement. And I know that if I'm standing within the circle, I'm also standing within the circle. So if I'm in this circle, then I'm in this circle. So this would be my, um, this would be my hypothesis. This would be my conclusion. So let's write that down. So I'm going to write down if... I'm an angle that measures 60 degrees, right? So if an angle measures 60 degrees, then it is an acute angle. So then it is an acute angle, right? If I'm here, then I'm also there by definition. So let's go to question number 13. Question number 13 has the region in the middle shaded, right? And when I'm standing in the middle, I'm standing in this circle, and I'm also standing in this circle at the same time. So that's the situation where both are true, right? And remember, we use the word some or sometimes to depict that situation. So we can say that some of these guys over here are also these guys. Some volleyball players are also taking piano lessons, right? Those are the ones that are in the middle. So some people play volleyball and take piano lessons and take piano lessons, All right? So again, that is a key word, some, um, and it would indicate this cut type of scenario where you have two overlapping circles and we're doing and, right? It's a conjunction because both are true at the same time when I'm in the middle. I'm both in this circle and in that circle. Okay, so let's look at 15 over here. So you have two different categories. You have art class and you have freshman. And we've shaded in this part of the circle over here. Now if we think about it, everybody in this part of the circle over here is not in this circle, right? So we've excluded the part in the middle over here which contained uh, let's say people who were in art class and freshman at the same time. If I'm standing over here, I'm a freshman, but I can't be in art class, right? So we've excluded everyone who is in art class. So this shows everyone who is a freshman, but not in art class, right? It's a negation. 
So students who are freshmen and do not take art class and do not negation take art class. Thank you.